Hi, I'm Bobo, Product Specialist at Thinkbox Software, and this is an overview of the XMesh geometry caching system. Here we have a scene with several objects in it. Currently we see three in the viewport, a tube, a teapot, and a plane. The tube and the teapot are animated. We'll select them and we'll open the XMesh Saver UI. It's showing by default the selected geometry, but we can also show all the scene geometry we can expand a little bit the UI to see more. We can show the visible unhidden objects, the name selection sets. We can expand the UI the other way in order to see the objects in each name selection set. We can filter the particle flow systems and their events, thinking particles and their groups, frost objects, XMesh load that saved previously, and so on. Let's use the selected geometry. We'll be saving to the default file name, which is using a base path, uh, some symbolic names, a version, uh, an automatic name, and XMesh extension. We can also save to OBJ. If we try to explore the output, we'll see that the path doesn't exist yet, but it's built from the symbolic path names. If we start saving, we'll be hiding the source objects and assigning the uh, standard materials matching the colors of the wireframe, colors of the objects. So now we have a single XMesh loader that represents all three objects. It loads a file sequence. If we try to explore the path now, we're going to see the components of this sequence. There are multiple files per frame. There is a material library and then we have the uh, material IDs, smoothing groups, texture coordinates, and uh, faces and vertices, velocity information per frame for the vertices, a single face list because topology is not changing, vertex uh, data files for each frame, and an XMesh file, which is an XML file, referencing the data channels saved for each frame. You'll notice that if we look at frame 20, the XMesh file is referencing the vertex list for frame 20, but the face list and some other uh, channels like the material ID's and smoothing groups for a single frame, frame zero, because topology is not changing and this saves a lot of space. Let's save again, but this time we won't save a material library. That means all the objects that don't have a material will show the wireframe color of the XMesh loader. Alternatively, we can resave and update the XMesh loader with a standard gray material for all the objects that don't have a material assigned. If we unhide the original sources and assign a multi-material to only the tube, now the plane and the teapot don't have a material, but the tube has multiple materials. We could switch the uh, XMesh saver to produce red neon standard material for all the objects that don't have a material. This is useful to get a warning for all the objects that should have had a material but didn't at saving time. We can take a look at the resulting submaterial we have a first submaterial, which is the stand in, the red stand in for the missing materials, and then the four submaterials of the tube. Instead of replacing the missing materials with red, we can replace them again with uh, standard material with the diffuse set to the wireframe color. So now we get the tube with its own four materials and if we look at the sub materials the first and the second slots are the stand-ins for the teapot and for the plane and the other four are for the tube let's delete this xmesh loader and then hide the original sources. We're going to animate a parameter of the tube 
base object, in this case the height segments. We'll change it to 30 on the last frame and we'll set it to 10 on the first frame. This will change the topology of the tube and the resolution will increase along the height. If we would resave the same three objects to an XMesh cache, XMesh will take care of the changing topology. And if we take a look at the output folder, we'll notice that now there are multiple files for material IDs, moting groups, and so on. Whenever the topology is changing between frames, a new data file will be written. In the areas where the topology is not changing, for example, frame 0 to 5, uh, the same data will be reused. The total size of the current cache is 3.8 megabytes. Keep in mind that each file uh, is compressed. Let's delete the XMesh loader again and unhide the original sources. So far we've been saving all objects as a single cache, but we can also save each object to a separate cache in a separate subfolder. In this case we have three objects, so we're going to get three caches, one for the tube, one for the teapot, and one for the plane. you notice that each XMesh loader that was created has the name of the source object in its uh, name. And we can see those XMesh loaders in the XMesh saver and potentially resave them uh, with changes or without changes or combine them back to a single loader. Here are the subfolders where the data was saved for the tube, for the teapot, and a little bit less data for the plane because it's barely changing. We'll delete the XMesh loader again and switch the XMesh saver to show us the particle flow systems in the scene. There is a layer with the particle flow system and some related objects. Let's enable it and take a look at the animation. We have spherical particles which are bouncing off two deflectors and are being driven by a gravity force and uh, delayed by a drag. We can move the particle flow source to the list of objects to save, but let's first take a look. If we restart the saver, a version 2 is being proposed because version 1 was already used in the previous example. We can also manually increase the version number. We'll save the whole system to our XMesh cache. The system itself will be hidden and the XMesh takes its place. You'll notice that all the colors are preserved as multi-materials. Let's uh, display the system and not hide it anymore after saving. Um, we want to take a look at what will happen if we save a single event from the PFLOW. We have three events currently. Let's take a look inside. The second event is the green particles jumping between the two deflectors. If we want to save an X mesh of only the green particles, we can drag the second event to the list of objects to save, and then we'll save one particle flow event to an X mesh cache. Let's disable the PFLOW and take a look at the X mesh loader. It's only loading the green particles. We could, of course, save individually each event to a separate XMesh in order to separate portions of the PFLOW. Let's delete this XMesh loader 
and turn off the pflow layer will enable a TP layer where we have a thinking particles system. Uh, this system has uh, two shapes. When particles uh, come close to the point helper, they change their shape to a green box, otherwise they are blue teapots. We incre uh, increase the version number to three and drag the system to be saved. The whole thinking particle system both of the teapots and the boxes are now being saved to a single cache and if we would play back and drag the XMesh loader to the site in order to see the results we can compare to the original TP system and they are identical. Just like with particle flow we can save individual groups the group A contains the teapots and the subgroup 1 of group B actually contains the boxes. So I can drag this group into the list and save again. This will create a separate XMesh loader so we'll delete the original one with the whole system and drag to the site only the new loader and you'll see that we have only the subgroup containing the green particles safe to XMesh. Let's delete the XMesh loader again and turn off the TP layer. We'll re-enable the PFLOW layer and create a frost system out of the particles. We'll set it to Jabritson with a radius of 5. If we play back the animation, we're going to get a frost following the particles. We can switch the XMesh saver to frost filter. If we open the dialog again, we'll notice that the version is automatically incremented to 4. We can drag the frost into the second list to double click in the first list in order to move to the list of objects to save. Currently we are saving using the render settings because XMesh Saver is a form of renderer that takes into account the render settings of all the objects, particle systems, frost and so on. Now we have an XMesh that looks just like the original frost. If we move the XMesh to the side, we can compare. In fact, the uh, saved XMesh stream uses the render settings and the frost in the viewport uses the viewport settings, but they are relatively similar. This was an overview of the basic features of the XMesh system. In future demos, we're going to take a look at some more advanced uh, features like retiming of the XMesh loader, um, saving multiple subframes per frame and so on.